Well, back from the other side of the world, Tulsa podcaster and speaker Amy Siegfried joins us once again in the studio here in America. You know, we're gearing up for college and pro football. We'll talk about that too, but uh, Amy, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, so first of all, you, you went to Australia, didn't make it to a World Cup match, but you got to do another bucket list item while you were on that side of the world. We did. We went to a Japanese baseball game, which was on my husband's bucket list, and I didn't know it was on mine until after I went. It was such an incredible experience. The fans are fantastic, very positive. But one of the coolest things that I noticed from this is when your team is batting, each player has their own song. Yeah. So the crowd out in the outfield, there is a horn section, there's a drum section, just like going to an FC Tulsa game. They're out there cheering with their specific song for their specific player. And when your team is playing defense, it's quiet. Everyone sits. Oh, really? And this is the famous Tokyo Dome, one of really the most famous sports stadiums in the world, and uh, just looks like a great packed house there. It was fantastic. I want to talk about college football here. So, uh, by the way, that's, I will have to do that someday because I you love do. baseball. Okay, so the biggest three college football programs in the state kick off this week. TU starts on Thursday. I want to talk about OU first, Brent Venable's second year. What are Sooner fans thinking? What are they expecting going into this year, the last one in the Big 12? Well, hopefully this will be a redemption season. Last year was a little rough ending six and seven but they are ranked number 20 in the preseason polls Dylan Gabriel's back for his second year along with Brent so we should see how this goes I'm, I'm looking forward to a good season for the for OU Oklahoma State uh, much has been made about the, the quarterback battle after losing Spencer Sanders to Ole Miss uh, so Oklahoma State fans Cowboy fans, how do we set our expectations going into this season it, it could be an interesting season for the 19th season for Mike Gundy Oh, there are only 13 players returning. And so that can be a tough, it might be tough. And it also has been their worst recruiting class in a little more than five years. So it mm. could be maybe a, a rebuilding year for them. Um, but you do have that, that quarterback battle. They might be playing multiple quarterbacks the entire season. So something to keep an eye on. Mike Gundy has been open about that. Mm -hmm. And so that, that should be very interesting. They get going on Saturday. So as for TU, they came, come up on Thursday. Uh, so new head coach Kevin Wilson, right? He's been to Ohio State. He's been to Indiana. These big, big programs. He's coming to to you this is kind of kind of being an exciting reset for the Golden Hurricane it could be a really exciting year for them and I think Tulsa fans are excited because OU is playing to you and that game is sold out and is the hardest to find ticket I think of the college football season in Oklahoma maybe besides Bedlam That's and huge. so it'll be really exciting to see what happens there I like it because OU and and TU they've played before it's always been just packed to the gills and you just I just love to see H.H. H. Chapman Stadium like that absolutely it's not like that for every game and I love to see it uh, so conference realignment we've got Pac-12 apparently dissolving what is the future of college football I think I keep thinking about that you know I went to Toledo that's a smaller school what is the future is it going to be like the big guys conference and then everyone else I mean what, what's going to happen here it seems that way but it's almost like that cup game right like everything's sort of shuffling and so we'll see as things sort of fall in line with Pac-12 in all fairness we would say well maybe it was blindsided with some of the exits by ASU and Oregon and Arizona and so do they pick up a couple of smaller schools as this season comes along we don't really know what that might look like but I do believe at some point someone's going to have to dissolve because there's just not enough schools to, to fill in the blanks but you have these these power schools and it's been really interesting or excuse me power conferences to see how this is all going to happen i think it could be kind of a lame duck season because you have so many teams moving next season that it's sort of this last hurrah and these big rivalries like bedlam and washington washington state are likely going to be no longer yeah the apple cup come on you got to keep playing the apple cup and you know it's interesting so do you think that there will be as we mentioned at the top maybe like kind of i've heard one commentator say an nfl light like the top of the elite programs almost like an english premier league in soccer and then everybody else do you see that possibly coming it could be it's really interesting though because we have to think about in college sports when they change conferences that impacts not just football it's basketball it's gymnastics and so now you're having athletes i think the longest commute next uh next season for in conference game is oregon to rutgers it's 2400 miles mm. and so you're talking about these are student athletes right and so this is taking away from their school this is taking away from a lot of other opportunities so it's, it'll be interesting because the NFL they're they're paid so obviously we have NIL and, and players can be paid but there's students first and, and foremost and so it'll be really interesting to see how that impacts all the way down not just football 
it's a great it's a great point because nobody's really talking about the other sports. It's all about football, but right. nobody's talking about right. those Oregon to Rutgers, you know, gymnastics meets, Absolutely. right? Um, so behind us, last night's game, your podcast. Tell us about something interesting and very cool you're doing for your latest episode. I think this is so neat. So we're covering the U.S. Open this week, which is the, tennis, the last Grand Slam in New York. But uh, in the two weeks after the NFL starts, we are doing a podcast episode on play calling. We had a reader request. They had been watching the quarterback on Netflix. And she said, I want to know more about play calling. How do these quarterbacks do this? And I know nothing about that because I've never played football. And that's just too complicated. Yeah, neither and have I. It was the most fascinating episode to really put it all together. And I'm, I'm really hoping that people love it because it's probably the most interesting and most fascinating episode we've recorded yet. Well, Amy Siegfried, you can listen to her on last night's game, anywhere where you get your podcast. Amy, thank you. And we'll uh, see you. you again. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. The